Hello and welcome. We are back this weekend with another installment of Summer at Marisol Bay. I didn't end up recording yesterday because it is who I am as a person and I have terrible time management skills. Um, but I am very excited to be doing the Liam route today. So let's get stuck in. We're going to pick up where I thought that the the route branches were. So we have been invited to go to lunch with Liam and Mrs. V, or we can go with Brooke. Brooke will lead you more often to the the white route, um, at least I think. <laughs> so. We're going to have lunch with Liam and Mrs. V. Oh, I actually told Liam and Mrs. V that I'd had a, that I'd have lunch with them today at uh, something Pearl. It's where that Camilla lady works that you were telling me about. Brooke scrunches up her nose in disgust at the mention of Camilla. I should have expected that kind of reaction, to be honest. <laughs> Gross. It's so expensive there, and the food portions are the size of the palm of my hand. Good luck out there, Cairo. Mrs. V is an angel, but Liam is a real snake in the grass. Ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? What do you mean by that? He didn't seem so bad. Maybe a little condescending, but he didn't give me negative vibes or anything. Liam is the best at what he does, which is putting on a nice smile and acting like something he's not. The man is best friends with Camilla, and the two of them believe in turning Marisol Bay into a luxury resort with no room for family activities. I don't like it, not one bit. What Brooke says is definitely concerning. But I'm afraid that she might be blindsided by her dislike for Carmella. Mrs. V vouches for Liam, and I have a hard time believing that a woman... that that woman has a bad bone in her body. My decision is almost crystal clear. I can't make judgments on people I've only just met. Liam seems like a really nice person to me, and I don't really want to get in the middle of your fights. I wince at Brooke's crestfallen face because I know I could have worded that much better. I'm sorry, that came out really harsh. I haven't seen Liam in the same light that you have, so I can't make any assertions. I want to give him a chance and see what he has to say. No, I understand completely. Oopsies. I shouldn't let my hatred for the situation cloud things. She still looks so upset. Ah, I have to do something. I don't want Brooke to think I'm against her, especially since we'll be working so closely with each other for the rest of the summer. Hey, let me see how Camilla is for myself today. Think of it as a recon mission. I'm entering the villain's base to see how they operate and... Brooke holds her hands up and smiles brightly. It's okay. You don't need to do that. You're new, and I'm asking you to involve yourself in some petty drama between me and Camilla. Since we can't have lunch today, you owe me something else, like... Oh, I know! She places a hand under her chin and then winks at me. I saw that fancy car of yours in the parking lot. The pretty pearl blue one I haven't seen parked in the employee section before, like, ever. Oh my god, you want my car? No, silly. I want to ride home today. I take the bus usually, but I heard it was supposed to rain later tonight, and I don't really have an umbrella, so... Oh, thank goodness. I'm really appre- <laughs> You want my car? I'm really appreciated. Appreciative of Brooke's help, but not enough to hand over my baby. That's easy. I don't mind. 
I love driving. That's not a lie. In my car is where my thoughts are the clearest. I can jam out to the radio and let my troubles fly out of my rolled down windows. I hope that Brooke doesn't mind my playlist though. <laughs> Yay! We can totally bond in the car ride home and you can tell me all about your first day. We talk and laugh for a bit longer until it's time for us to start our shift for the day. We leave the air conditioned rip tired together. As soon as I arrive outside the Riptide, I'm instructed by Amelia, by a work group message, that since today is Pirate Cove's grand opening, my job is to greet every new person that steps out onto the beach. I am to introduce myself to them as Captain Bailey, make them feel welcome, and never break character. I feel like there should have been an orientation or training for this, but if Amelia thinks I'm ready, I guess I'm ready. Thanks to Brooke, I don't look so bad, and so far there really isn't anyone here. The next few hours should go by without a hitch, right? How hard could greeting people as a pirate really be? I straighten out my coat and cross my arms over my chest. I had told Amelia that I would make Captain Bailey my own character. I did say I would come up I would come up for some lore for the man. And that will help me get through this whole never break character thing too. Let's see, what does a pirate do exactly? Sail the open seas looking for treasure, drink rum with his mateys, whatever the hell he wants. Sail the open seas looking for treasure. A pirate sails the open seas looking for treasure, duh. I take a glance over at the riptide that has been completely repurposed inside. There's no way this ship is ever leaving dock. For our storytelling purposes. The riptide isn't a newly renovated resort trap. It's a very big ship stocked with enough artillery and supplies to help us last the longest and most arduous journey across the seven seas. All in pursuit of the long lost treasure. Not just any treasure though. Captain Bailey is far from average. Captain Bailey is the most elusive, yet most talked about treasure. Captain Bailey is after. He is not the, he is after the. Most el elusive, yet most talked about treasure of legend. The Golden Dagger of Sir Midas II. Legendary pirate hunter. It's said to turn anyone it touches into solid gold. This has been Captain Bailey's lifelong goal. Ever since he heard the story as a child from... From... Uh, someone. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What matters is that he will now stop at nothing to get that treasure. Even while his boat is washed up ashore here at Marisol Bay. Captain Bailey is going to ask the guest to help him find the secret treasure that might be hidden next nearby. Now that I've decided what kind of pirate I'm going to be for the rest of the summer, I'm pretty excited to prove myself. People begin to pile on the beach, laying down blankets, coolers, lounge chairs, and umbrellas despite it only being 9 in the morning. I guess they want to get a good spot before it gets crowded. Gosh, I hope it doesn't get too crowded. The sun beats down on my face, and I suddenly remembered that I didn't put any sunblock on. And the hat I'm wearing really does little to protect me from the sun's rays. From where I'm standing, I can see the lookout. Guests are already piling up there. I wonder if they have some breakfast specials or something. I can't make out any specific facial features, but I'm sure that bright, vibrant orange hair belongs to Brooke. The walkie she's given me is hidden in the jacket pocket since I can't exactly use them whenever I want. I don't think pirates typically have this kind of technology, so I'll have to be careful when I use it. I'm lost in my thoughts as I feel something tugging at the hem of my sleeve. I look down into the eyes of a child, hardly taller than my waist. His father is standing behind him with one of those stuffed animal leashes attached to him. His partner is nowhere to be seen, but I suppose it doesn't matter. 
This is my first customer. The cutest child I've ever laid eyes on. His tan skin and black curly hair mixed with those bright green eyes and freckles. He sound he does sound very cute. I just want to squeeze him into a hug. I need to make a good impression on these two. Who should I focus my attention on? The child. The child. I need to leave a lasting impression on the small child because if he's happy and excited, he'll remember Pirate's Cove. Then he'll pester his father until he takes him back and spends more time with Captain Bailey. Aside from the extra money for the resort, it could also mean more exposure. Kids are notorious for spreading information. Imagine a child exclaiming loudly to his father how amazing Pirate's Cove is. Then someone walks by and hears him. Suddenly that guest gets the idea in their head to check out Pirate Cove as well. Business models aside, I should really aim to create a lasting experience. Pirate's Cove needs to make money so that Marisol Bay remains open. But that's not my job to worry about. For me, as an actor, nothing will bring me more pride than creating a believable character and, in turn, an authentic pirate experience. I kneel down by the child and act as if he, his father and I, were the only people on the beach. <laughs> oh, I love the pirate talk. Ahoy, mateys. What brings ye to me beloved cove on this fine morn? The kid looks up at his father who smiles encouragingly at him. He motions for his son to answer. The small boy pauses for a moment and then lets out a small cackle. We go swimming! It be a beautiful day to swim indeed. Do you know what else you can do? The kid looks up at me with eyes full of wonder. Now it's my time to let people know just who Captain Bailey is. Me ship has washed ashore on this here island and I need ye help. What can I do, mister? That's Captain Bailey to ye, young swashbuckler. Captain Bailey! The child toddles in the sand but manages to salute me. I'm trying to leave this here island, but while I fix me ship, if you find any treasure, any at all, you have to let me know. Pirate's honor, yes? Pirate's honor! As the child and his father walk off to find a good spot on the beach, I rub my hands together. The first guest at Pirate's Cove seems satisfied. Now, just a few more hours of this. I gaze up at the lookout and catch a glimpse of Brooke. She must see me as well because she waves at me. I tip my hat and hope she can see it. A pirate? <laughs> a pirate lusting after a pretty wench? I hear her pause and turn around slowly to greet the new smart-mouthed guest. When I look up into those soft brown eyes of the man in front of me, I can't help but gasp out loud. It's the same man from yesterday. His hair is still messy. He's still wearing a slightly unbuttoned Hawaiian shirt. Though this time it's a pretty pastel pink. And he's got the same smirk on his face. Like he's just told the best joke in the entire world. I wonder if the man recognizes me dressed like this. If he does, he's in for a surprise because I can't break character no matter what. Amelia's orders. Arr, ahoy me hearty. The only booty me thinks of are gold doubloons. The man begins to laugh at my response. He's just like any other patron of the resort, so I need to pr provide the best experience despite our very, uh, bloody interaction yesterday. I feel my face heat up. I'm sure this man teases everyone. As my mind drifts, I almost... I'm... I'm almost caught off guard when he asks me something. Wait a second. Are you that guy I bumped into at the dining aquarium? I'd notice that pink streak of hair anywhere. Me name be Captain Bailey. Most dangerous pirate in the seven seas. I exclaim loudly in the air, hoping to draw in more people to Pirate's Cove. At the end of the day, I really want to oppress Amelia so she'll write a good letter of recommendation to me. 
Then maybe I'll be able to move on to a better acting gig. Really? <laughs> really? Captain Bailey, eh? That's all I'm gonna get? <laughs> this whole staying in character thing is a little hard, actually. What more do you want, Skellywag? I am but a pirate. Yes, my apologies, Captain. You just look an awful lot like a guy you ran into yesterday. Let me take you out. <laughs> Let me take you out. I was hoping to see him again so I could apologize properly. With a dinner at this really upscale scale place, Maradella Pearl. My breath has caught in my throat for a moment. This man can't be serious, can he? All he did was bump into me. Work the plank. <laughs> Work the plank. Avast. Before I make you walk the plank. I place my hands on my hips and lower my head so the top of my hat is covering my eyes slightly. I aim to look menacing, but the man is still smiling. He scratches his cheek. Wow. Won't even break character for a fancy free dinner, huh? Guess I'm lucky I hate that place then. I personally think that the lookout is the only restaurant people should be eating at when they visit Marisol Bay. Yeah, now that I look this man over more, I don't think that this Carmela chick would take too kindly to his dad shirt and uncombed hair. I, need to try harder. <sighs> I guess I'll have to try harder, Captain. I'd like to see more, da like more details of what that tattoo actually is. It's very tribal. I do like his jewelry though. He runs a hand through his hair and smiles. I'm at a loss for words. I don't really see why this man has his attention set on me. Oh, yes, of course. I'm part of the Marisol Bay experience after all. Still, there's something I want to know before the man goes back to enjoying his vacation and I have to go back to serving every patron with a smile and a bad pirate pun. What's your name, landlover? The brown-haired man waved me off with his hand. His smile still on his face. I don't know if that's a fair trade, Captain. When I find out your real name, you can have mine. Until then, call me... He places a hand on his chin and looks up into the sky in a dramatic fashion. Hardy, was it? I'll be your Hardy. Uh, that's like a friend in pirate terms, right? <laughs> I gave the man a thumbs up. A little sad that I can't learn his name. I shake it off quickly. Who knows if I'll be seeing this man much anyway. How long does a vacation usually last? Two weeks tops? I'll be here for two months, so I'm sure he'll move on with his life soon. I'll leave you, leave you to your uh, cove. Nice meeting you, Captain Bailey. Perhaps I'll run into you again sometime. Just as quickly as he snuck up on me, the man disappears. I stand in place, not really knowing what to make of the interaction. I decided that I want to see more of him. Don't want to run into him again. <laughs> oh, I'm going after Liam, so I'm going to have to avoid you, Wyatt. Salisbury. Don't want to run into him again. The next few hours drag by slowly. I've interacted with at least a dozen kids, some more en energetic and exhausting to deal with than others. I'm tired, but thankful it's my lunch break. I'm glad that I have plans. Acting is my passion, but being Captain Bailey all by myself out here with no other crew members to talk to is kind of lonely. I technically have Brooke, but we can only wave at each other from a distance.
I shake the negative thoughts off and begin to head to the locker room to change into my regular clothes. When I'm done, I begin my trek. By following the signs, I reach the restaurant without a hitch. The only thing stopping me from entering is the deep grimace of a blonde woman who stands at the front of the restaurant that overlooks the sea. Behind her, I notice fancy tables with silk tablecloths, red fabric napkins, and wine set out as centerpiece. This place is really quite beautiful. I really like the backgrounds in this. Like, I love, I love water-based things that just water is just so pretty i mean i don't actually like being around it but i like looking at it so i don't like i don't like beaches and things like that but i just i like the view this looks like a really pretty place to be i look down at my wide color my wine colored tank top bait black <laughs> black basketball shorts and sneakers with a frown. I'm not dressed for the occasion. At least Mrs. V and Liam have proper uniforms that they can wear around the resort. If I wear Captain Bailey's uniform, I'm going to have to talk like a pirate the whole time. It's fun, don't get me wrong, but I'd like to be Cairo for a bit. The woman catches sight of me as I approach and she scoffs. I watch her gaze travel from my scuffed canvas sneakers all the way up to the sweat around the neck of my tank top. Uh, from the deepened scowl on her face, I don't think that she's too impressed with me. This has to be Camilla. Welcome to Murdella Pearl. Are you lost? We only serve a certain kind of clientele. She points to a stand, a stand-up sign in the, in the sand a few feet away from her. The text is small, so I have to squint to read it, but it says, No headwear, exposed shoulders, and all legs allowed. For more casual dining, please visit the lookout. <laughs> Rude. I take in a gulp of air and watch the woman carefully. Mrs. Uh, Liam and Mrs. V could have given me a heads up about the dress code. Will I even be allowed in? Hi. Oh, um, Liam told me to meet him here. My name is Cairo. I was just hired the other day. Camilla Rose rolls her eyes. She shows no fake politeness and instead tells me how she really feels. Oh, that pirate mascot. I'm not too thrilled to have you here, but if Liam says you're worth paying attention to, I suppose I will trust him. For now. She motions for me to follow after her, clearly not wanting to spare any more words on me. She lean she leads me back she le she leads me to the back of the restaurant, where Mrs. V and Liam are chatting excitedly. They each have a plate of food in front of them, and there's one more place near a vacant seat next to Liam. Liam, your pirate friend has arrived and he didn't even bother to dress appropriately. She turns her attention to me. Today is an exception. Next time, you better wear something that adheres to our rules because I won't let you in otherwise. Right. Oh my god, I hate her. <laughs> <sighs> Camilla is a little uptight about the rules here. I look to my companions. Mrs. V is smiling up at me and Liam's face is expressionless. He waves Camilla off who scoffs and stomps away. Cairo. Take a seat by me, Cairo. We already ordered food since our lunch break isn't that long. I do as he says and sit down next to Liam. This is a Mer de la Pearl signature, a sirloin steak with roasted vegetables and a glaze made in-house. 
My eyes widen at the steak. This is something I did at a dinner party. I would have normally just eaten a ham and cheese sandwich. <laughs> Thank you. Mrs. V is cutting her steak slowly, though she stops to look up at me and exchange some words. How was your first day of work so far? I heard some guests talking about visiting Pirate's Cove with their children. Honestly, the job is a little tiring. I have to get used to talking solely as a pirate, but method acting is a really great practice for the future. You mean to tell me that you can't break character at all? That seems impossible. Cairo. For us, maybe. But Cairo is a trained actor. What he's doing shows great skill and understanding of his character. I understand, which is why I was shocked when I found out his alma mater. Liam sets his gaze onto me. Do you know how many famous actors and act actresses graduate from OSPA? The first resort isn't where you need to be. Even though I've had similar thoughts in my head, I can't help but feel a bit offended. Isn't he working at the same place I am? Or does this have to do with what Brooke was telling me about? Does he look down upon me for working at the other side of the resort? I'm silent for a moment until Mrs. V cuts in. She taps the edge of her... She... What? What? She taps the edge of my glass plate with her knife, which makes a clanking noise. Try this steak. We know it's a bit on the fancier side, but this is the most ordered thing on the menu. Silence fills the space as Mrs. V and Liam watch me gingerly cut my steak into small strips and finally put one towards my lips. When I bite into it, the meat melts into my mouth and I feel like I'm in heaven. This tastes amazing. Oh, now I'm hungry. Oh my god. Good, right? He's smirking as he leans back into his chair. Arms crossed over his chest. Yeah, this food is definitely delicious. The uptight atmosphere I could do without, though. Especially as I remember Carmela's scowling face. Perhaps it feels so strange because I know I don't belong in a place like this. Eating fancy food and discussing how my life could be going down a much more prestigious path. A feeling of uneasiness settles in my stomach. I take another bite of my steak so that my company doesn't notice. Mrs. V wipes her lips with one of the red napkins and places it back onto the table. Were well, there a lot of guests at the cove today? Yeah. yeah, but they were mostly kids. Except for this one guy. I stop myself. I wonder what Liam and Mrs. V will think of him. Maybe they noticed him checking in? He was wearing this pink Hawaiian shirt, messy hair, tattoo on his arm. He stopped in to try and get me to break character. I carefully leave out the part where he jokingly offered to buy me dinner at this very restaurant. I shove another piece of steak in my mouth and focus on the flavours instead of the two people in front of me. For some reason, I'm nervous talking to him about the encounter. I can't stop thinking about that goofy grin of his. Right. Uh, that definitely sounds like a Wyatt thing. Liam rolls his eyes and stabs the broccoli on his plate rather forcefully. He picks it up and shoves it into his mouth. Oh, is that his name? Mrs. V can't hold back her giggle. She puts her hand up to her mouth. Wyatt is always here. He's a bit of a regular. He's a wonderful boy. I'll bite a bit on the loose side. That's why he and Liam never seem to really get along. Liam is wearing his suspenders and tie compared to Wyatt, who seems to wear Hawaiian shirts and swim shorts exclusively. Liam's hair is combed to the side and it looks like there might even be some gel holding stray pieces in place. Wyatt's hair looks like he simply rolled out of bed and ran his, ran his fingers through it. <laughs> Cairo will find out on his own why I find that man so annoying. He loves to eat at the lookout, so you'll probably see him around a lot. But if he ever bothers you, you let me know. 
I can get any guest removed. <laughs> Power of the concierge. <laughs> Let me expel him. <laughs> Liam simply nods and goes back to eating his steak. The conversation seems to shift away from Wyatt, and the three of us talk about random things. We finish up about 10 minutes before our lunch break ends so that I have time to change back into my pirate costume. I thank the pair once more for the hospitality and they invite me out for lunch again tomorrow. Perhaps I'll take them up on their offer. This outing wasn't so bad at all. I did get to learn the mystery guy's name at least. The rest of the day is uneventful and even the ride home with Brooke seems to go by quickly. I'm too tired to do much when I arrive home, so I eat my dinner, look up some more pirate jargon, and head to bed. When I make my way into the resort today, I'm a little shocked to see Wyatt standing there chatting with both Liam and Mrs. V. It's rather early and barely any guests are mulling about. I reach up and rub my eyes. I'm barely awake right now, and yet Wyatt seems to have so much energy. He's animatedly talking with the two receptionists, waving his arms in front of him. I don't want to interrupt the trio, so I try to make my way past them without anyone catching sight of me. This morning I scarfed down a chocolate frosted donut in my car because I heard Mrs. V's voice in the back of my head telling me I need to have energy to work a long shift. She might not be happy with my, that my meal was just deep fried sugar, but hey, I tried. I take a sip of my coffee and drag my feet across the wooden floor. Once I get to the riptide, I nearly don the pirate outfit again and put on my best Captain Bailey performance. But I'm so tired. It seems like an almost impossible task. I don't even want to think about it. Good morning, Cairo. Trying to slip past us, hmm? I see the older woman peer over the desk between both Liam and Wyatt before motioning for me to join them. The boys both stop what they're doing and turn to look at me. Wyatt is smiling at me, while Liam simply gives a small nod of his head. Do you have a minute to spare? The boys and I were just talking about something you might be interested in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. I take another sip of my coffee and approach the group. When I reach the front desk, I feel a slap on my back. I look up at Wyatt, who lets out a laugh. Ah, so the mystery man's name is Cairo. Good to know. By the man's body language, I'm a little shocked that he's only a guest at the hotel. He seems to be at ease around both Liam and Mrs. V. Perhaps he stays here every summer. I push the thought out of my head when it registers in my brain what the man in question has just said. You didn't hear a thing. My name totally wasn't mentioned. Mrs. V raises a hand to her lips. I'm sorry, dear. Was I not supposed to mention that, dear? It's not really a huge deal. I just kind of liked that Wyatt didn't know who I was. It was like a little game, and I thought that if he wanted to find out so badly, he'd come back and... I shake my head quickly to abolish the thought. I'm here to work. If I refuse to be involved in Brooke's drama with Camilla, I'm not going to stir up my own drama with a hotel regular. Kyra? I'm sure it doesn't matter, and it's just Wyatt being annoying again. Right, Cairo? Wyatt places a hand on his head, on his chest, and recoils backwards in a dramatic fashion. Meanwhile, Liam has his lips upturned into a smile. I look between the two of them and then back at Mrs. V, who has eased into a grin of her own. Liam has lost all air of professionalism when he regards Wyatt, though his counterpart doesn't seem to regard Liam like he's anyone special. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Me and the captain are great friends, brothers even! He would never say I'm being annoying. I take a large gulp of my coffee and finish it. Wyatt is a lot more the theatrical than I had initially thought. Right, Kai? Tell Liam here he doesn't understand the little thing we've got going on together. 
I can't help but raise a brow. I don't know what thing Wyatt is talking about exactly. Liam rolls his eyes. Wyatt is a regular here, but he's always been a pain. No need to humour him for our sake. He'll get along just fine. <laughs> Wyatt is surprisingly not annoying. Liam is right. You're a little annoying, Wyatt. Don't drag me into the middle of this. <laughs> uh, don't drag me into the middle of this. I feel like I should probably support Liam. <laughs> I would just be like, yo, no thanks. Whatever you two are on about, I don't want to be dragged into the middle of it. I hold my empty paper coffee cup and shake it. I don't have enough coffee to be taking sides. Maybe ask me in a few hours after my lunch. Speaking of lunch... Wyatt winks at me, which earns quite a big sigh from Liam as he casually slams the mouse he's been using onto the wooden table. We both turn to him and he shrugs. My cursor was missing for a moment. Right. Perhaps Marisol Bay should invest in new computers instead of upscale restaurants. Perhaps cutting funding to the other part of the resort would accomplish the same thing. Let's not bore Cairo and Mrs. V with our hypothetical snow. Gee, what is it with these two? I don't want any part of it. I've got to keep my eye on my paycheck and that beautiful letter of recommendation from Amelia. I quickly brush them both off. Anyway, enough of all that, boys. Are you going to tell Cairo about the movies on the beach, or shall I? What? Movies on the beach? Uh. Since you've already started it, V, may as well finish up. Liam has long since begun typing away on his computer behind the concierge desk, not bothering to look up at us. I'm assuming it's an event for guests to watch movies on the beach? Yes, but not just any movies. Pirate movies. Pirate Cove will shut down for a few hours next week while pirate movies are shown on the projector screen. She turns to Wyatt. All guests are welcome to attend free of charge. The lookout will be providing appropriately themed snacks as well. Hopefully you'll have the day off, Cairo. She looks from Wyatt to Liam. You two are always bickering. Put aside the difference and enjoy your time at Marisol Bay. Whether it be behind the desk or out on the beach. Aw, oh, Mrs. V always knows how to make me feel welcomed. Thanks for so many great summers. He outstretches his hand towards me. And as for you, Cairo, it's nice to officially meet you. All right. This is the first time Wyatt has heard my real name. I take his hand and we shake on it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a breakfast burrito I need to order. See you guys around. I will definitely be at the movies on the beach. Wyatt stalks off leaving just me, Liam and Mrs. V. I still have some time before my shift starts. Should I talk to them? Yes! Yes, you should. When Pirate's Cove wasn't operating, the resort would have movies playing on the beach every weekend. Now I imagine we're sticking to a pirate theme because of, because of the cove. Yes. It definitely sounds like an amazing idea, especially if Walk the Plank is shown. Amelia told me that the Riptide is a replica of it. You like terrible movies, Cairo. Liam finally speaks up from behind his computer screen. I see a smirk on his face, and I can't help but roll my eyes. Hey, I won't deny that the acting is terrible, but the movie is a classic for pirate fans, alright? If you say so. You'd think someone like you would appreciate better talent and production value. I let his comments roll off my back. While high production value is, of course, preferred, I'd argue that you don't need it to create a memorable experience. Walk the Plank is a good movie because it's fun to watch. It's 
good because it's bad. You have a weird way of looking at things, Cairo. Well, if that movie is being played, why don't the two of you go and see it together? The older woman cuts in with a sweet smile. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Someone needs to show Liam how to properly watch a gem like Walk the Plank. But on the other hand, do I really want to spend an afternoon alone with Liam? Ah, uh, yeah! Hmm. Yes, I can sneak away for a few hours. What do you say, Kairo? Do you want to show me how good this movie is? Yes! Yes, I do! I feel like I'd be doing you a disservice if I didn't show you the golden moment since <laughs> in a cult classic. Liam breaks out into a smile, despite trying to convince me that his opinion is the right one. Oh, look at him. I love him. I want to snap his suspense. <laughs> I bully everyone I like. <laughs> my, my first impression of Leo, of Le Leo, Liam, was that he's a stickler with a bad attitude. Now I'm seeing that there's more than meets the eye with him. Teach me, oh great actor. Liam turns to the printer behind him and begins collecting a stack of papers that begins that's being spit out from it. When the printer stops, Liam gathers the pile of papers and hands it to me. Hand these flies out in Pirate Cove. Make sure Captain Bailey entices people to stop by. Right. Work. I nod and get ready to head to the Riptide so that I can change into my pirate costume. I really like Mrs. B too. What a sweet old lady. Another long day passes, but this time Wyatt doesn't stop in to bother me at Pirate's Cove. My gaze lingers on the lookout above, but I catch no sight of a Hawaiian shirt anywhere. It's a somber feeling that resides inside the pit of my stomach. With, with little distractions today, I focus on my work and get through the day as best I can. The next week passes by dreadfully slow. In that time, I see Liam and Mrs. V every morning. I always share a few words with the pair before I go and chat with Brooke in the locker room at the Riptide. I do catch sight of Wyatt every so often, wearing a brand new Hawaiian shirt every day. Despite Despite his proclamation to Liam that we're best friends, I don't get to talk to him for more than a few minutes at a time. Wyatt is either spending his time trying to get me to break character, or another guest bursts in and Wyatt slumps back into the shadow somewhere. Though today is going to be different, because it's the day where movies are going to be shown at the beach. Amelia has informed me that while Pirate's Cove is closed, it's still my area. And as such, I'm expected to watch it. This morning, extra staff began punching out tickets, setting up the projector, and helping Brooke with the food. All I have to really do is supervise and make sure all guests are enjoying themselves and behaving appropriately. As long as I'm vigilant, Amelia gave me the okay to watch the movies as well. Which is great, because I'm really looking forward to watching a movie with Liam. I can't wait to see him scrunch his nose up in disgust at the costumes, bad acting, and terrible writing. Part of the fun in a movie like this is watching it with other people, because you get to laugh together. Guests begin to shuffle into Pirate's Cove. I'm really glad that Amelia doesn't have me dressed in costume today. I wait and watch silently as more and more people begin to look for spaces to park themselves. There's rows of plastic chairs, lounge chairs, blankets, and towels in the sand. As the seats begin to fill up, I can't help but look around. When I hear the opening theme of music of Walk the Plank, my heart sinks. Where is Liam? Did he stand me up? I hang back and put on my best fake smile as I welcome the last few stragglers into the movie. Once the theme songs start playing, the scene sets a... The scene sets on a prisoner with his arms and legs tied together. His beard looks like it's been filled in with marker and... The rag in his mouth looks like a napkin from a restaurant. 
We don't see the other actor on screen, aside from his hand as he holds a plastic a plastic blade to the prisoner's neck. Aye, tis a little too late for that. The opening line is delivered with a build-up of dramatic music and this really weird particle effect that just looks like sawdust flying in the air. There's a bright flash of red and then the prisoner falls to the ground. The camera zooms zooms in onto the thick blood which is barely dripping from his mouth. That has to be ketchup. I nearly jump when I hear Liam's voice behind me. He stands He stands next to me with his arms crossed over his chest. I'm sorry I'm late. I was checking in a particularly difficult guest. I notice that Liam is still wearing his uniform. Now it all makes sense. Is that guest Wyatt, by chance? I recall their encounter from the week before. Don't get me started on that guy. He's entirely in a world of his own. You guys don't seem to see eye to eye at all. Yes, well, we have two very different outlooks on things. Thankfully, he's only a guest. Imagine letting someone like him be in charge. What's the worst he could do? I try to think about it. He'd definitely open a man cave where all the dads could come and watch football, grill hamburgers, and talk about their love of Hawaiian shirts. Do you really want to know? No. On second thought, maybe not. Besides, we're here to watch one of the greatest movie in cult classic history. Pay attention or you'll miss the best parts. Oh, it gets better than what I just saw. There was an execution with absolutely no content. <laughs> Harsh critic. That never gets referenced again, by the way. Liam opens his mouth to say something and I quickly interject. It's not the point, okay? So shush and watch the movie. Liam turns his full attention to the screen, but I notice a small smile creep across his face. I'm just gonna poke him in the cheek. Smile, boy. You can do it. I hope Liam is listening up a bit. Dealing with people's requests all day, he must need a break. The movie goes on for the next 20 minutes without either of us speaking. It isn't until I hear a witty line that's delivered quite poorly that I chuckle out loud. Liam shoots me a slight sideways glance and the two of us have a small back and forth about why it's totally bad but good. I'm having such a great time that I almost didn't notice the makeshift theatre clearing out. The movie isn't over yet. Why are people leaving? Seems people are fed up with this terrible movie. He chuckles at my bewildered expression. How can people leave mid-movie? We're just getting up to the good part. Just then, Brooke begins to walk towards us with a small grimace. She runs her hand through her hair when she finally stops in front of Liam and I. What happened? People are leaving because we ran out of free snacks. Uh -huh. Totally not the movie's fault. If it was good, people would stay regardless of snacks. It's hot out here, the projector is barely bright enough to show the movie clearly, and the audio is kind of choppy. But hey, not a total failure. Honestly, I didn't notice any of that until Brooke mentioned it. Perhaps that's exactly how people should be watching this movie. Good audio quality and HD graphics would take away the charm. I look around. At least half the guests are still here. I'll watch the whole thing, even if it's the worst thing I've ever seen. Liam begins to walk past me and finds a vacated seat among the crowd. Brooke winks at me and pushes me towards Liam. I don't have much time to react because Brooke t takes her empty snack card and rolls it away. I take a seat beside Liam. The man says he hates this movie, but he's sitting here to watch the whole thing with me. I'm kind of glad I'm not out here alone. 
no, you're not the worst movie partner I've ever had. I can say the same about you. Even though this movie is a gem. Right. right. A total gem. <laughs> Liam doesn't seem to like the way that word tastes in his mouth. He rolls his eyes and leans back into his seat with his arms crossed across his chest. Is he going to sleep during the movie? <laughs> so, maybe I won't change his mind about the movie, but I hope he's having a good time with me. When the movie finally ends, Liam stands up and dusts off his pants. You know, the last time I watched a movie in a theatre was when I was still in college. Since working here, I haven't had the chance to go out. Didn't Mrs. V say that there were other movies being played besides Pirate Code? Before Pirate Codes are opened? You never watched any of those? I never had anyone to watch a movie with. He shrugs his shoulders simply. Well, I'm glad I could be here to spend time with Liam. Seeing him relaxed for a bit has been a nice change of pace. Thanks. It's been really fun. Maybe we can do it again sometime. Yeah, that'd be... nice. The two of us part ways. Liam returns to his job at the front desk and... I help with the cleanup on the beach. I look forward to more days like this at Marisol Bay. And that is where I'm going to leave this installment of Marisol Bay, the Liam route. We will pick up again later. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're looking forward to more Liam. I am. I love him. He's very nice. Thank you for watching and bye.